Okay, you're all very welcome. This is the first stand of Beef 2024. So on this stand we're setting the context for the overall open day to look at the challenges and opportunities that Irish beef farmers are facing over the next number of years. And really when you stand back and you look at it, there's three really big areas that are of concern or of issue that beef farmers on a daily basis are looking at on their farms. And it's really about how much, how much emphasis they put on each of those in terms of their farm, their farming system and their family farm. And really those are around family farm income uh, the impact the environment is having more and more on our daily lives, not just in agriculture, but across, across everything we do. But when today we're wanting to look at it, how is it having an impact on beef farming and going forward. And then overall then, we have more and more people interested in seeing, well, how does my farm impact on my overall family lifestyle? How does that fit into what I want to achieve with my family, uh, my community and working on the farm? So if we look, go back and look at these individually and we look at farm income, a lot of what we'll talk about here today at the open day will be about improving farm income. And that's nothing new from previous open days. But really when we stand back and we look at it, uh, a lot of what we've talked about in the past is around how do we drive on farm income? And farm income is important because what we want to do is get a worthwhile return for the hours that we put in uh, to our farm. And really what drives that farm income are the kind of core things such as our system choice. And again, a lot of what we cover on these boards will be covered throughout the open day through the different various villages that you will, you will visit throughout the day today. So system choice, comes down to really you know what it, and we're, we're really talking about dairies you know are you do you have a suckler farm is it a dairy calf to beef are you buying in weanlands buying in stores are you bringing cattle through to slaughter or are you bringing them through to sell them on as, as forward stores and after that then really and when we look at the farm system there's very little difference in in, in the overall income per hectare when they're running at the same stocking rate um, but Within individual systems, there's different drivers of profitability. And within all systems, very important, and we're not going to go through these individually here, but we'll see them on the open day, is animal health, or overall production costs on a per animal basis and on a per hectare basis. Stocking rate is hugely important, uh, and farm income is driven very much by stocking rate on the farm. And after that then, live weight gain across all farms and on suckler farms, fertility has a big role to play. And as I said, we're going to see that throughout, throughout the open day. If we look then at the environment, we move over to environmental efficiency. What are the kind of key drivers now that are, that are impacting that farm level and that we're going to have to focus on over the coming years? Our, food, our, our meat processors and our, and our retailers who are selling our beef are becoming more and more interested in what is the carbon footprint of the beef that we're producing and can we reduce it? A lot of people are talking about working towards net zero. So what, what does the carbon footprint mean and how can we reduce it in terms of overall emissions? After that then we're really looking at other areas in the environment. Water quality is really coming to the floor in the last couple of years and it's something we're going to have to focus an awful lot more on. And we've Chagask has launched a new eight point plan on improving water quality. We do have a national biodiversity crisis across the country. And again, what are our farms? What can our beef farms do to improve that? And, and where does that fit into the systems of beef production that we're producing? If we stand back and look at the board B uh, quality assurance um, assessment on farms now, we're moving more and more towards a sustainability plan and what, how, how to make our farms more sustainable and how that matches in. And then in the last couple of years, we see how the environment and weather is impacting on farms. The last two years we saw really wet winters, late springs, we've seen dry summers in the previous years and that. So we are starting to see an impact of climate change on farms and again that is going to impact on our system choice uh, on farms as well. And then oh, finally in terms of our, the environment, our agri, our agri schemes much more so now are more and more environmentally focused. So we take for argument's sake the two very big ones that a lot of beef farmers are tending today are involved in, the suckler cow efficiency programme and acres. They're very much into, around improving um, the, the agri environmental credentials on the farm. And then overall what we're saying really is we move all that in today in terms of how does all of this fit in terms of family lifestyle. We know from uh, many surveys, and we did a survey recently, but we also know from our own National Farm Survey that a lot of farms, uh, our farmers are working off farm, in excess of 50% uh, are working off farm. So how does that, how do we match in our systems, our beef farm, our overall, what we're trying to achieve on the farm in terms of a work-life balance um, in with our, our off-farm employment? How much hours can we devote to the farm in the week? 
um, where does that fit in in terms of the choices we're making in terms of the technologies that we're putting in on the farm. Labour availability is becoming an issue on farm. When we stand back and look at labour availability on dry stock farms it's very much around crunch times of the year or trying to get jobs that are done on the farm, contractor availability, all of those things all matching in. So while we might be wanting to push on certain things like stocking rate and that, we do also have to take into account how does that impact in terms of the labour requirement on the farm for that. And finally then, there's a lot of other areas in terms of um, the training. We look at a lot of our schemes now involve a training element um, and, and, and all of this we have to bear in mind does have a health and safety element as well in terms of when we're under pressure things do come under pressure what are the technologies that we can employ in the farm to improve health and safety so that's kind of put in the context of the of the overall open day and these are the issues we want you the visitor attending the open day to see to hone in on throughout the different villages and in the forum later on I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Paul Crossan, who's going to go through some more detail on this. Okay, thanks Pierce. Um, so Pierce has looked at the key issues that affect the current viability of your farm. So what are the factors that drive the farm system you have today? I'm going to dwell a little bit more on the whole area of environmental sustainability and Pierce has touched on this already. So I'm just going to dwell a, a little bit more on this area. Um, and, and it really straddles what you do today but also the condition of the farm and how you hand over the farm to the next generation. So it's really important in that context. We also must remember that, you know, from a consumer perspective, the whole area of environmental sustainability is critically important. We're increasingly being asked to demonstrate uh, and indeed to improve the environmental sustainability of our food systems by the consumer. And this is getting translated now into environmental legislation. Uh, and I suppose in the positive sense in terms of, and Pierce has touched on this, uh, in terms of agri-environment schemes and so on. So I'm going to look at five different areas in this context. Uh, firstly, carbon. And I suppose throughout all of these areas, it's a really positive message. We are building from a position of strength, as the heading says here. Uh, and you'll see that as I go through these five areas. Firstly on carbon, greenhouse gas emissions. We have a really good starting point. And what I have here on the graph is the global average for the carbon footprint, or in other words, the amount of emissions required to produce a kilo of beef. Global average 47, we're at about 18 in Ireland, which as you can see is, 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 is very, very positive relative to, to where the global average is. And yes, we can improve. And, and, and I'll note this through the, through the five concepts that we are in a good position, but we can improve. Uh, early finishing, improved weaning rates, uh, methane reducing additives, efficient use of nutrients, carbon removals. You'll hear much more about all of these issues today uh, as you go through uh, the villages, and particularly from a carbon point of view in a greenhouse gas emissions village. Secondly, the whole area of biodiversity also featured, obviously featured quite a bit uh, recently. Uh, and the positive message here is that beef farming is very compatible uh, with high levels of biodiversity. Uh, you know, what we're talking about here is the preservation of habitats and semi-natural grasslands. Uh, and indeed, beef farming is actually crucial to ensure the retention of high levels of biodiversity because undergrazing, in fact, uh, and the abandonment of land is, is negative from the, the point of view of biodiversity. So we have a very positive story uh, to tell. Uh, and if we look at the, the growth in organic farming and indeed the participation in agri-environment schemes, acres we've seen 50, 55,000 now participating in acres. Uh, we've seen really good take up in the, in the biodiversity measures. Uh, so clearly a very positive uh, 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 issue. And what we would say is that beef farming is innately compatible uh, with high levels of biodiversity. Water quality, Pierce touched on this. So we have commenced uh, and recently launched our Better Farming for Water campaign. And issues that are important there, if we look at the key factors driving water quality on farms, it's really the, the interaction between, between soil type, the weather, uh, that, the prevailing weather, and management on your farm. So if you're on heavy soil types, you're more likely to, to, to have issues with uh, overland flow. If you're on more uh, free draining soil types, perhaps leaching is more of a challenge on your farm. So the, the soil type is clearly very important. Weather, where we have these intense rainfall events, and we've had, as we know, quite a few of them in recent years, um, overland flow and sediment uh, loss into rivers and water bodies becomes a real risk. Uh, and management, obviously, where you have higher levels of end use, uh, that creates a challenge, or higher levels of nutrient use in general. From the point of view of beef systems, we have low nutrient surpluses. So the challenge 
uh, should be manageable there, but we still need to take measures to protect our watercourses. In our forage village today, you'll see a very detailed series of demonstrations around simple measures that can be taken uh, to prevent sediment loss, nutrient loss, and indeed, in general, improve the viability of your farm system, uh, as well as contributing to better water quality. This area food feed uh, to some might be a relatively new concept, but essentially what we're seeing here is what is the contribution of beef systems to global food security? And in Ireland, we have a very, very positive message because what we are essentially doing is using mostly land that cannot be used otherwise for food production and converting that land and the non-endable human food sources into high quality human food protein. Uh, we have grass-based systems, so forage-based systems, 60 to 90 percent, uh, and relatively low quantities uh, of concentrates use, uh, used. So we have, um, we've just finished a, 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 a study uh, and one of those papers we compared a number of different countries within Europe uh, and Ireland ranked really, really well. In fact, we were the most uh, favourable from a food security perspective. Uh, and, and that was a really important piece of work for us. Uh, ultimately, this is all well and good and all really important, particularly for, for, for preserving our farm from, a, from a, a, an environmental sustainability point of view and passing it on to the next generation. But we, we need to have a viable farm system in the present. Uh, and if we look at our farm profitability and our participation in agri-environment schemes, I just looked at the most recent National Farm Survey report and what was the contribution of direct payments both through base, agri-environment schemes and so on, to total receipts on the farm. And it's about 40%, whether it's in suckling or non-suckling. So four out of every 10 euros earned uh, on beef farms come from sub subsidies and direct payments. So that's a really strong message in and of itself. So look, I'll leave it at that.